Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you for uh, coming out this afternoon on Friday afternoon. Um, I just want to give you uh, preliminary information as we know it. Um, I want to uh, caution everyone that this is a rapidly evolving investigation and this is our preliminary investigation and what we know now because I think it's important to be as transparent as possible uh, when officers have to use lethal force. So last night at approximately 9.40 uh, in the evening, officers, our dispatch center received a call uh, from a woman who was afraid for her life um, and she had a previous relationship with this man. Uh, the man had been calling her that evening saying that he was going to come over to her residence um, and that he was known to carry a firearm. You know, I, I, I started my career in social work um, and I investigate a lot of family violence, so I know how dangerous these situations are, both for victims and the responding officers. And so last night was no different. Uh, this was a, a scary incident um, and really ter terrifying for the female victim. Um, the uh, suspect was known to be armed and he also had active felony warrants for his arrest in both the city of Boulder and Adams County for domestic violence and other related charges. Uh, our charges stem from at least one previous incident with the victim at this location. The first officer arrived, arrived on the scene approximately uh, 10 o'clock in the evening, uh, did an, in, uh, an intensive interview with her and waited for additional cover cars. Uh, the suspect was supposed to arrive at her residence uh, a little bit after 10, between 10, 10 and 10.30. Um, at approximately 11.16, the suspect drove up to this woman's home. Uh, there was a very brief confrontation with the suspect, and one of our officers deployed a taser, which was partially effective. Seconds later, the suspect pulled a 9mm handgun. Two officers, two Boulder police officers, uh, fired their guns, striking uh, the suspect. The suspect uh, tragically died at the scene. He has been identified. Uh, um, he has been identified by the ba Boulder County Coroner's Office as Christopher Swagner. He is a white male, 36 years old. He did not live in Boulder. Thankfully, uh, last night, our officers or any other victims in the area were not injured during this incident. You know, the use of deadly force uh, is something no officer uh, wants to do or engage in. The taking of a life is the most serious action an officer can take, and it will stay with them the rest of their lives. We've asked the Boulder County uh, investigation team to investigate the officer-involved shooting, like any other case where an officer fires their weapon. Uh, they are currently conducting interviews with the involved officers. So I'm not allowed at this point to give any information about their interviews. Um, once the interviews and the investigation is concluded, this investigation will be turned over to the district attorney's office, Michael Doherty's office. I want to reiterate at this time, I have no reason to believe this was anything other than a tragic but justifiable, justifiable shooting based on the facts as we know them now. I also want to encourage anyone who is a victim of domestic violence to reach out for help. The Safe House Progressive Alliance for Nonviolence, known as SPAN, is a great, great resource uh, for help, and so is our Boulder Police Department. We have victims advocates here as well who are always willing to help. At this time, I'm gonna turn it over to Michael Doherty and then we'll answer a few questions. I wanna thank you again for coming out. Good afternoon, I'm Michael Doherty. I'm the district attorney for the 20th Judicial District, which is Boulder County, and I want to thank you for being out here on a Friday afternoon before Memorial Day weekend. I share the Chief's commitment to being transparent and sharing information with the community as quickly as possible, but I also want to join her in emphasizing how early we are in this investigation. It was just last night that this took place. We're going to learn a lot between now and the next several weeks. And as we learn more information, we will always share that out with the community, including when I make my ultimate decision about whether the shooting was justified or not. And I'll talk more about that in a minute. But I really appreciate you being here because we recognize how important it is to share information with the community as quickly as possible when an officer or officers use deadly physical force against another individual. In this case, after Boulder police officers discharge their weapons, 
they immediately notified the critical incident team or the Boulder County investigation team. And I really want to emphasize how important that is in making sure that we conduct an independent, thorough, and effective investigation into what took place. And in Boulder County, pursuant to our protocol, when a law enforcement officer uses deadly or potentially deadly physical force, the law enforcement agency, the officers are required to notify the team so that we could bring in officers and detectives from other agencies to conduct an independent and thorough investigation. And that's exactly what happened here. I can't think of a time in my entire career where the notification to the team happened as quickly as it did last night. So as the chief indicated, the shots were fired around 11.20 in the evening. My phone was ringing at 11.40 last night. And people were already starting to respond to the Boulder Police Department from all different parts of Boulder County, from all different agencies, to ensure that the very best detectives and investigators we have in Boulder County would conduct that independent investigation. That investigation normally will take several weeks for the investigators to complete because they are extremely thorough in what they do. They look for every piece of evidence, physical evidence, videos, witness interviews, and so on. And that work began in earnest last night and is continuing throughout today and will continue in the weeks ahead. Once that investigation, which again usually takes a few weeks, is completed, it's then turned over to the district attorney's office for me to determine whether the officer's actions were justified or not. That's our process any time an officer uses deadly or potentially deadly physical force against another person. That's what the team is working on now. In my career as a prosecutor over the past 25 years, I, like Chief Harold, have worked on domestic violence cases time and time and time again, and they so often present danger and extreme risk, not only to the victims, but also to responding police officers, and that's what we saw last night. And they, at times, can result in tragic consequences. And again, that's what happened with the loss of life last night. So I want to reiterate what the chief said about resources available in Boulder County and having worked different places in my career, I can tell you we're really fortunate in Boulder County to have the victim services and support that we do from SPAN and Safe Shelter of St. Vrain Valley and from each of the law enforcement agencies having victim advocates uh, on hand to assist victims of domestic violence. So if you're a victim or survivor of domestic violence, I really encourage you to reach out to SPAN or Safe Shelter of St. Vrain Valley or one of your local police agencies for assistance. Thank you for being here today. I really do appreciate it. I'm going to step to the side, but if you have questions for the chief or myself, I'm happy to do my best to answer those. Although, again, I would emphasize how early we are in the investigation. Thank you. Two different counties. Um, I can tell you that uh, my understanding was that Adams County had active warrants out for uh, the suspect's arrest. Um, and uh, like on all warrants, that any time that that person would have contact uh, with police officers, they would run his information and he would be actively looked for and arrested at that point. Um, our warrant went, just went into the system um, not long ago. Um, but I can tell you that we have documentation that the warrant was actively being investigated um, and we were actively trying to locate this man. We don't have a fugitive unit, but we do have uh, detectives that, and officers that do this kind of work on an ongoing basis. That was for domestic violence. Um, and I'm sorry, I didn't catch um, the incident from my understanding uh, occurred on May 13th. The warrant was signed um, within the last, I want to say, yesterday. Was your question, did the suspects fire any shots? We're still looking at that. I can't tell you definitively if he did or not at this point. I'm sorry. I, and just a reminder, we're not, Boulder, we're not investigating the actual case. Those questions can be answered later when we, when we really have a, a thorough understanding of what happened and they, they do still shots of the body-worn camera. But I'm sorry, I just can't answer that at this time. I, I believe that was a different officer. Um, and I believe from what I, from what I, I am being told, um, the uh, taser deployment was partially effective, not completely, did not completely inca incapacitate uh, the suspect. Thank you.
Too early to to say. They're they're still uh, working, obviously, with with this victim, and um, you can imagine how um, horrific this this would be uh, for a victim. And um, but the officer's quick response um, and this this uh, suspect with a gun. Um, thank God they were they responded it the way they did and so quickly. Um, um, and I don't I don't want to. Um, you know, I don't, I just don't, I don't know. I don't, I just don't know at this point. May 13th incident was the same address where the warrant for that was issued by I believe so, sir. Any other questions? Um, given that you knew that the suspect was potentially armed, what steps are officers supposed to take to avoid a deadly confrontation? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And, um, you know, the community knows how passionate I am about uh, the sanctity of all human life um, and tactics uh, that these officers are trained in. Um, most certainly time distance barriers uh, are used in these types of, types of incidents. Um, and so uh, I can tell you that from my perspective, less lethal force was attempted um, but was partially um, effective. Um, but I can tell you this is always at the forefront of our officers. Uh, they've received a tremendous amount of training on how important it is tactically communications and intelligence gathering on situations like this um, that at the center of our use of force model is the sanctity of human all human life I hope that's helpful John I believe all three officers have been put on paid administrative leave like in any other situation where officers uh, use their firearms I believe so. Do you know if there was any attempt by family members of uh, the man that was killed to get his guns removed or anything like that? I'm sorry, I don't know. I don't know any information about that at this time. Chief, may I ask a question? Yeah, absolutely. I really appreciate all the questions you have, and these are all valid questions, of course. I want to emphasize that once I make the decision as district attorney as to whether the shooting was justified or not, I share that information with the community in the form of a very detailed report that's posted on our website. We also, anytime an officer uses deadly physical force, I host the community town hall where all the body worn camera video is also showed uh, to members of the community and the media. So if you have questions that, about this incident, just know that I promise you, we promise you, that all the video is gonna be made available and people will be able to see clearly what danger the officers faced last night and what actions they took in response to that danger and that's true in every officer involved shooting that we handle in this jurisdiction we always host a community town hall where we share the videos the photographs explain the ballistics all the witness interviews everything so that people understand why we've made the decision we reached whatever that decision is so these questions that you have today are definitely valid and they will be answered in that final presentation when we announce our decision as to whether the officer's actions were justified or not I do believe so. How are you feeling? How am I feeling? I, it's a tra it's it's a tragedy. It's it's a tragedy for this man's family. It's a tragedy. These officers will never be the same. Um, this victim will never be the same. Um, we're all tired. Um, uh, we've all been working hard, and uh, I'm just glad there was no other victimization uh, regarding this incident. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you coming out.